Good evening. Good evening and welcome very, very much to this segment of Conversations. Well, we're pleased to welcome to the program Mr. Bradley or Brad J. Siegel. And Mr. Siegel is Executive Vice President and General, General Manager with an exciting telecommunications development here nationally, that being the campus uh, network that we're going to talk about. And Brad, welcome very, very much to Conversations. Thank you. Glad to be here. I wonder if you might share with myself and the cable audience the campus network and its broad parameters, when it got started and what is involved. I know it's a, a system of developing programming to campuses, but maybe you could share a general sure. historical background of the entity. Well, first of all, Campus Network is a satellite communications company that specializes in providing video programming and hardware exclusively to college campuses. And we got started about I would say a little over two years ago now with the campus network concept. Um, we first we began marketing the services to college campuses at that point, and then we actually launched our first programming service, which is called National College Television, uh, in January of 1984. And we launched it on six college campuses, and then um, subsequently added approximately eight campuses per month oh. and we go off the air for the summer and when we, we actually have just gone off the air last week for this summer vacation uh, mm -hmm. not our vacation but the school vacation yes and we have um, about 95 affiliate campuses at this point it's really and, growing yeah it is yeah. very rapidly uh -huh. the response in the market has been absolutely tremendous uh -huh. um, the letters we get from the schools and from students talking about the programming and the response uh, of the entire campus market in general has been it's been very very good. Uh, our whole the whole idea behind National College Television was to provide a national television programming service targeted to college students and the college community in general on a national basis, mm -hmm. so that these schools that have all of these local origination channels um, that were either being utilized exclusively for educational programming. Um, or under and underutilized or not utilized at all. Yeah, a lot of them are just sitting there not being exactly. used at all. Just right, like yeah. in Manhattan. Yeah, right. um, would have a programming base, a high quality professional programming base, um, number one, around which they can program locally, and number two, to draw viewers into that channel. And yeah. That has been a major effect, I think, one of the major effects we've had for campuses around the country is that we've provided them with really high quality programming which has created a, a viewership of their channel which may not have existed in the past. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah well people tune into it regularly to see what what is on. And we, our programming is unique and is pretty well targeted. Yeah, it is a targeted audience taking advantage of some of the technologies that are emerging, including, as you say, it would have been finding transponder time on a on a on a satellite to distribute this or how is it done? Yeah. Is it on this, in the CU band, or how, what is the technology well, of the actual distribution network? We, we use two different frequencies. One mm -hmm. is the C band, which is your typical, uh, most traditionally used um, satellite frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have also added a, a double hop to that system, mm -hmm. and we also transmit a KU band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. When KU band allow, is a more high-powered frequency, which allows you to use smaller mm -hmm. satellite dishes. Uh -huh. which um, it also allows you to do something that doesn't necessarily relate to National College Television Network, but relates more to the second service we're introducing, which is called Video Center Events, and we'll be introducing that service this fall. And we've taken all the steps necessary to introduce that service up to this point. We have been installing what we call video centers, mm -hmm. and the video centers are large screen video projection systems, in essence video theaters, that we install in ballrooms and auditoriums on campuses that have um, an average seating capacity of about 800 seats. Yeah. And the, the idea is to bring um, event programming into that auditorium, um, whether it's live concerts, debates, speakers, Broadway shows, even motion pictures. Mm -hmm. um, bring programming that would otherwise have not been available in that college community to those campuses. Yeah, I see. And capitalize or actually exploit the the efficiencies that are available through distributing programs like that through satellite technology as compared to a rock band or a major speaker having to go to hundreds of campuses. They yeah. can now do it via satellite yeah. and that image would be 
projected in a high definition, uh, high resolution image on a large screen, an 11 by 15 foot screen. And we also have installed Dolby surround sound systems. Mm -hmm. So really what we've created is the finest sound and, um, and video experience available in a theater environment. Yeah, and you take advantage again of the distributions. This is program that's coming from a central place to a number of different locations. You say almost 100 now, going near the 100 right. mark well, around the country. And they would be programmed to at, at all at the same time in a certain sense. It's not as though there's bicycling of tapes to each exactly. of the head ends and that kind of thing exactly. or individual ones. So you've created a network, a national network based on college? Right. Yeah. Actually, two different types of networks. Uh -huh. One is a, your, a more traditional television network, which mm -hmm. is National College Television Network. Yeah. And then the other one is a network of video theaters. Yeah. Um, whereas um, if we look at the distribution of movies, uh, uh, there may be a limited number of prints of a particular movie, say Raiders of the Lost Ark, mm -hmm. that would be available to the college market and those movies would be distributed throughout the course of the semester or year to a number of college campuses and we can now take that movie and distribute it in a, uh, a form that's at least as good as 16 millimeter and will be as good as 35 millimeter a year from now through the technology that we are developing to distribute motion pictures yeah and this all the schools would in essence re be receiving it on the same night yeah I see the the the, the, the theatrical performance is something is a in a large part would be a would be a, a a function in a certain sense of the product projection capability and the technologies in that area are really becoming incredibly uh, fine the quality picture quality and so forth of video projection systems for large right. screen uh, you know presentation is it they've made you know, jumps in the in the recent experience that have been very exciting, but you all, but the but the distribution of the programming without the theatrical part would have been done on, on television monitors around and about the campus or something of that sort. Or right, the National yeah. College Television yeah. Network uh -huh. Service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that programming is once it's received by the campus via satellite. Yeah, it's then distributed through a number of different distribution and exhibition systems, uh -huh. closed circuit systems that exist on campus as well as local access cable where the school is responsible for programming a channel that reaches beyond the campus and out into the community. Yeah, it's interesting. So you've got a synergy with the cable universe and as it were exactly. where that cable universe exists probably in a great number of the campuses around the country. They have communities that are cabled, I would probably guess. They'd right. Probably well, the schools are actually the ones that have the the synergy with the universe, with, with the cable community. Mm -hmm. We have the relationship with the school, and then the school takes that programming out into the community. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have the relationship with the, with the cable operators. We are not a, a, a supplier to cable operators. Yeah. We are a supplier to college campuses. I see. And you deal with student associations or whoever contracts we deal at the with, campus level? Yeah, we deal with anywhere from student unions mm -hmm. to... For National College Television Network, we, we really deal more with television and communications people, whereas for the video center events, we deal more with uh, the student union directors and student activities directors. Same kind of people that have lined up concerts and did lectures exactly. and that kind of thing. Exactly. Sure, because those are the people that are naturally been doing that in the Sure, in the and we're just, we're just delivering the same type of program to mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. but now we're delivering that program in video, mm -hmm. live via satellite. So mm -hmm. As an agent may typically sell a concert to a college campus concert committee mm -hmm. or a film distributor to the film board or a lecture agent to, a, to the lecture committee, we now can sell those types of programs to all those various buying groups on campus, whether it be concerts to the concert committee, films to the film committee, lectures to the lecture board. Mm -hmm. and, and Broadway shows or dance concerts to the Fine Arts Committee. Or yeah, that's really, that's really exciting. It's coming, as you say, targeting to the campuses around the country and so forth. Uh, it's coming down from a satellite and so forth. Could others pick it up? Could the people with uh, backyard dishes pick that up? Could cable companies pick it up? Would they pick that signal up well, in the normal, uh, you know, purview of the sky with their satellite receiving dishes and so forth? And how do you target it specifically to the campuses? Or well, they could. Cable operators and home uh, people with backyard dishes could yeah. pick up National College Television Network mm -hmm. because it is not scrambled and it's delivered again in C and K U band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, since the dishes we are putting in on the campuses for the video centers mm -hmm. are K U band dishes, our video center event programs will be exclusively transmitted in K U band, uh -huh. and therefore cable operators and 
um, home satellite users could not pick up that signal. Huh, that's so in effect, it's scrambled. Really, mm -hmm. the only there's essentially really only two permanent KU band networks mm -hmm. right now, um, it w which are or two areas that are being exploited by the KU band technology. NBC has switched over to a KU band network, mm -hmm. but I doubt very much whether or not they would come off of their transponder to look at our program. Yeah, right. Uh -huh, yeah. And um, and the SBS network is a KU band network, and that is mainly data transmission. Satellite business system? Yeah. Yeah, right. IBM and sure. Comsat. Yeah. They're all, it's all data transmission and, and, and video conferencing, uh -huh, uh -huh. and they have really have no interest in pirating our programs. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I wasn't thinking necessarily pirating. I was just thinking in terms of the programming that's in the air. And then I was also thinking of the DBA. It sounds like, in a certain sense, the D direct broadcast satellite ventures that have, and in a commercial mode, and this, of course you're in a commercial mode here, but other than targeting a campus like that, some of those efforts at direct broadcast satellite uh, development, including the Comsat company itself, had a little difficulty in the recent experience, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. It's not really a, um, a lot of people refer to it as direct broadcast satellite, mm -hmm. but again, National College Television Network, one of our, the ad supported programming service, um, does not go directly into the home from a satellite dish, and mm -hmm. that's what direct yeah. broadcast satellite refers to. Number one, it refers to a, a much more high powered um, beam mm -hmm. coming off of the satellite. Oh, the satellite itself is more powerful. Right, yeah, much mm -hmm. more powerful, and therefore you could use a much smaller dish. Yeah, did I hear dish. you say that in the case of the KU band system you're using, the dish can be smaller yes. and the satellite is stronger? The dish is How big is the dish? Well, our dish is a 3.7 meters. Mm -hmm. Now, that's still oh, a pretty big, big dish. dish. Yeah. It's a 10-foot dish. Big investment. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is, again, because we're moving to this high-definition delivery of motion pictures, mm -hmm. we need the bigger dish to be able to receive that much more information, mm -hmm. uh, that much more bandwidth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and well, basically that's why we've gone with a yeah. larger dish. And it's also for retransmission. Mm -hmm. We're not receiving a signal that comes directly through a single cable into a into a television monitor. Yes. Mm -hmm. It goes it it gets rebroadcast and redistributed through an entire cable system. Uh -huh. So it has to have broadcast quality mm -hmm. um, characteristics to it. And a small little uh, two foot dish isn't going to handle it. Yeah, I understand. And then also, as you're moving into, as you said before, this aspect of the theatrical aspect, the video theater aspect of it, uh, utilizing the projection capabilities. Again, the technology of projection that allows that, you'd want to have a good technical system to back up to assure the picture quality of enlarged pictures such as that. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not well, sure the technology exactly right. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. if you, um, with a very small dish, you'd lose a lot of the, the, the signal quality, uh -huh. and when it ends up going through that projection system, it would be a degraded signal. Uh -huh. So the combination of the, the, the um, KU band earth station, the more powerful uh, band, uh, bandwidth and, and, and signal, um, our projection system and, the, develop and the, the changes and modifications we've made to the projection system in order to improve the resolution of the signal all make for a tremendously enhanced picture that's coming through that video projector onto that screen. Even yeah. the screen itself is the, probably the finest manufactured screen. Mm -hmm. It maintains, you know, very high level of brightness and uh, and reflectivity. Yeah, I know it's a, it's amazing, really. I uh, we had a reason to talk to some people who've been developing that. I was amazed myself at the quality of it. I've also talked with some people who are thinking in terms of high definition television, which is coming down the line, and they claim they're going to be able to get a video picture on the screen like that that would be uh, superior to, or the quality is 35 millimeter, you know, when you begin to move into... On the screen, in, on the projected screen. screen. Yeah, when they move into high definition television. Well, that's so where forth. we that's, are. That's yeah. what we're developing, uh -huh. again, because if we're going to be in the business of distributing motion pictures to college campuses, you can't... The, the picture can't have the quality, a typical NTSC quality. Mm -hmm. can't have, it can't be limited to 525 lines mm -hmm. when, when the consumer is used to at least 16 millimeter quality mm -hmm. and, and in a lot of cases on college campuses or some cases on college campuses, 35 millimeter quality. Yeah. They've got that experience so, in the theaters behind them. Right, right. so mm -hmm. it's forced us to develop a delivery system, a transmission system that will allow us to maintain that high... Uh, that high definition standard and yeah. yet beyond 525 lines. So mm -hmm. we have developed a coding and encoding transmission scheme that distributes the signals in its component parts in mm -hmm. red, green, and blue, mm -hmm. and doesn't combine them on a, a typical videotape. Mm -hmm. Only combines them through that project through those projection lenses on the screen. 
Yeah, it's a really ambitious project. I mean, it's, it's ambitious and an, uh, a really significant one. It makes one wonder, it was two years ago that this project got launched. I mean, just sociologically thinking, linking the campuses, wonder why it didn't happen earlier. Is it a function of the technology that's uh, made it uh, attractive and available now? Or I I'm, think and it's, and I in think a sense, I'm just paying you a compliment and saying it's such a good idea. It should have happened 10 years ago, but now it's... Well, a lot of people, you know, as we go along in mm -hmm. the business on a day-to-day -day basis, we're, I constantly hear people talking about, well, I had this idea a while ago. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, right. I, mm -hmm. we, we were thinking about this in, you know, in 1975 or mm -hmm. 1979, and there were lots of things that were done that were similar to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was a broadcast of the Grateful Dead concert live via satellite. It went to a lot of campuses mm -hmm. where they brought on the equipment on a uh, on, a, on a, a day rental basis. Okay. Now, it was strictly a pay-per-view right. situation, sure. which I think you're going to be opening on the possibility of also we've talked the about theater, that down the line. Right, yeah, right, the yeah. Well, our video center events mm -hmm. are, for the most part, pay-per-view. Right, okay. Right. Um, but the technology was more expensive, uh, less refined. The whole state of the business was just probably not there yet. Yeah, right. Um, and it, you know, it, it needed a good plan. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's what we've had. We've spent a lot of time researching this market. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it took a company that was dedicated to the college market yeah. and to establishing a network and building a uniform, standardized network on college campuses to take that leap. Yeah, to take um, that leap of narrow casting. It really is exactly. a narrow casting kind of leap well, of faith in a certain sense. Right, that and make, pay the, off and yeah, and make the investment in the college market by putting that hardware on the campuses. And you've been at it, it's been two years now, again, two years, or so, and you say you're going to go up, by the time you come back online, as it were, then into September or the fall semester and so forth, you're going to have 120 campuses right. that are going to be involved in this? That's correct. That's really a very rapid growth. Yeah, right? You're September online will, with Target and so forth? Yes, it? September yeah. will have 120 campuses at least uh -huh. for National College Television Network, mm -hmm. and that will be our fourth semester of programming. Uh -huh. And I, is that, are you, you're, that's on target, and do you see how, if you look out two, three, four, five years, have you got a target for how widespread this will be in terms of our college system yeah, and we, college we, network? Yeah, we see moving towards uh, reaching about uh, 350 campuses with National College Television Network within, uh, within four years. Mm -hmm. And that, and I think it would be much before four years, actually. Mm -hmm. If you take the numbers and say we're adding about eight campuses per month. That's sort of a conservative estimate. Yeah, and, yeah. and mm -hmm. I think once at, at that, if you're looking at the top 350 campuses, you, um, you're essentially hitting about 65 to 70 percent of the entire student population. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And in so many cases, uh, yeah, yeah. in so mm -hmm. many cases, we have the opportunity to reach a lot more students than are indicated by just one campus affiliate. Yes. For instance. Um, uh, we are in a system in uh, in Louisville called Metroversity, yeah. and they are through the Metroversity system. We're reaching eight campuses, but o we only really have one affiliate there, and that's Metroversity. Yeah, and they but sort of affiliate with the right. local educational community. Then, exactly. Right? Is that a characteristic, or is that unusual, or could that happen more? Right? No, or I think we're going to see we see it more and more. Uh -huh. We, you know, City University of New York is responsible for programming uh, a channel here on Manhattan Cable. Mm. Uh, so you, whenever you go by, flip through your channels, you hit, always hit Channel A. It says C U N Y Channel A. There's never any programming on it. Mm -hmm. That's what. That's how this. One of the ways that this idea evolved was that, was that the schools had told us that they needed programming for those channels. Mm -hmm. Once we get on that channel with campus networks, National College Television Network, we will, in effect, be able to reach all of the students in the New York City or Manhattan school area that are that may be going to NYU or Columbia, um, City University, uh, Pace, uh, Hunter, uh, yeah. we can go on and on. All mm -hmm. of those schools where students aren't really living in dorms or living at home or um, in apartments, and if they, for the most part, they probably have cable, or at mm -hmm. least, you know, basic cable. Yeah, right. So, then you, yeah, and then that's another extension outward. It's really a beautiful and sim way of, of targeting that. We've talked a great deal about technology, and that's all, of course, important and intrinsic to it. What about the program? What kind of programming has been going on? Not, let's say, first, not the theaters, but the other programming, the traditional program. What pattern of programming have you been putting on there to attract uh, people to the system? Mm -hmm. Well, we've um, again, everything we've done has been based on a great deal of research yeah. and focus groups, both on uh, college campuses all across the country as well as here in our offices. We've 
conducted, I would say, over 40 focus groups at this point. Mm -hmm. um, we do a cross-section of programming. Uh, we do concerts. We do documentaries. We do a new music video show every week. We do a career show called Business Week's Guide to Careers. Mm -hmm. um, you do concerts, both both uh, popular rock and roll and yeah, well, swing quartets or well, Lincoln we do Center or what? I mean, it's, it's dictated by the market, I suppose, by yeah, what the but students the want, right? But the show, the show is called Audiophilia. Yeah. It's a concert series. Mm -hmm. And we try and focus on bands that cross all musical genres but mm -hmm. are also... Uh, a fairly popular appeal. They're mm -hmm. more mainstream type of bands like Bob Marley, the Eurythmics, um, the Thompson Twins, Phil Collins, um, uh, jazz like Dave Brubeck. So you'd be presenting programming the kind of thing that would be like an HBO special or something like that? You'd yeah. be in competition, as it were? In no, terms of I don't think we're in competition. Right term, no. In a lot of cases, some of these programs have been on HBO or Showtime or even MTV. Oh, that's another question we um, want to get so into. So we get yeah. them in a, a second window in those cases. In other cases, they've been produced for home video, and uh -huh. they haven't been on HBO or the pay or other pay services, and we get them then. Mm -hmm. uh, so in other cases, they've just never been released, and mm -hmm. we... we we Pick dig them up, up. Right, exactly. Right, yeah, right. And the program, those programs are received extremely well on campus. Even though they've been on one of the pay services, the majority of students haven't seen the pay service. Yeah, right, so sure. Mm -hmm. It's new to them, and they like seeing uh, mu per music performed. And, you know, the, the video clips after a while get old, and yeah. they want to see a little bit more, especially on the, the more popular artists. Mm -hmm. So that's why that, that Audiophilia concert series focuses on... Uh, on more mainstream acts. They yeah. have a, a large number of songs that would be familiar to the students. Surely, right. And music's very important, maybe, you know, particularly important in that college age culture and so forth. So music would be, uh, did I hear you say something like music TV where you have the MTV, you have that as part of your programming pattern or those kind of well, clips of Yeah, we do. We have another program. Or or we have another program called uh, New Grooves. Mm. And New Grooves is a uh, progressive music video show. It's an hour show each week that's hosted by Meg Griffin, mm -hmm. who is a who has been traditionally a pioneer of new music in the New York area. She star, she's been on um, WLIR FM as a DJ, WNEW FM, WPIX, um, and she's always been a real proponent of new music and new bands and, and giving uh, new bands their shake. She yeah. does a show down at the Bottom Line uh, once a month called Local Heroes, mm -hmm. which are features bands that have not been signed to a record label, and whenever you go down and hear them, you, you really can't understand why. Yeah, it's a great they're showcase. So, they're yeah. great, exactly. Yeah, a great showcase for new talent. That's great. So yeah. that's what New Grooves is about. Mm -hmm. It focuses on college radio, uh, which has tradi traditionally been anywhere from four to eight weeks ahead of commercial album-oriented rock stations. Is that true? Yeah. In, in, the, in the long haul, really? Yeah, yeah, they're always breaking yeah. our... The record company has always looked to... Mm -hmm. um, to college radio for breaking new artists. Hey, that's interesting. I hadn't realized that. And yeah. we have 250 college radio stations reporting to us uh -huh. uh, through a um, through a, another company that we work with called um, uh, CMJ, College Music Journal, uh -huh. and they produce a tip sheet every week, and we work with them to get the the cream of the crop of what is happening on college radio. Yeah. So we do a top ten. On that show, top ten for college radio, we do artist profiles, mm -hmm. video spotlights, interviews. Mm -hmm. um, we look at the songs that have made the most upward movement on the charts, on the college charts during the course of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really gives the, the more musically intelligent college student uh, a good idea of what is going on. And when I say that... We, we, don't pro we don't propose that New Grooves is appealing to all college students, mm. but we do feel that there is a very large segment of college students that are interested in new music and want to be a step ahead. They're yeah. a little bit more musically hip than the average person, and that's what that show appeals to. Well, that's good, and, and maybe before we go on to that, and, and I mean, in terms of music and so forth, I don't know if you do the Emerson Quartet or String Quartets or symphonic music or... Concert music or not, maybe or we not. Haven't done but another yet. another another question I had in mind is whether or not uh, the the, uh, in, in, uh, the 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 you, you said before that some of them are things that have been done produced by others. Do you produce your own programming, or yes, how much of the programming do you produce in a general produce, sense, as opposed to taking stuff that's already in the can has been produced by somebody else contracting? Sure, we produce new grooves, and new grooves is produced exclusively for campus. Okay, network. right. And mm -hmm. we produce Business Week's Guide to Careers. Um, 
That's an, okay. Maybe that's another. That's another program we haven't yeah. talked about. Yet. No, we wanted to. Yeah, but. Uh, but we produce two shows, and we produce all of the wraparound promotional things that you see on the air. We produce something called uh, the on-campus report, mm -hmm. which is a little um, post-produced uh, news capsule, news bulletin of what's going on on college campuses across the country. Yeah. And we see expanding our. Um, ratio of originally produced program to acquisitions over the course of the next few years. We're going to add a campus magazine show, a campus game show, so we'll mm. be doing more and more original programming. What would your what would your guess be as to the ratio now of uh, original produce, production and... It's um, uh, 60-40. 60-40. 60 acquisitions, 40%. I see you're going to get program. up towards 50-50 and maybe... and you, So you are encouraging yeah. yourselves toward producing sure, programming. Sure. I wonder, overall question again, before we come to some of the other programming, is how many hours or what's the programming schedule? I mean, for this during it's, when you're up and running. It's four hours of programming mm -hmm. that the school schedule according to when it is best for their campus community to see those programs. So each program is repeated five times during the course of the week at different days and different times. The whole idea by the satellite is, feed. I mean, it's no, by no. the schools. The by schools the school, tape it. They tape it. Oh, I see. Okay. And then play it back five different times, and then erase it at the end of the week. I see. Um, mm -hmm. So the whole idea is that students watch select programs. They don't come home from work and turn on the TV at 5:30 and watch it until they go to sleep at 11:30 or 12. In real time. Yeah. Right. Like the majority of television viewers do. You could then bicycle tapes if you had to. to uh, no, I mean just as easily. Extremely it's expensive. All right. And yeah. remember, our programming is new. Every yeah. week it's new programming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it would be uh, logistically extremely a difficult nightmare to, to put do it mildly. Right. Yeah, I and see. Extremely yeah. expensive. I see. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. that's where your satellite technology really compensates for that expense. Yeah, it has all the way down the line from home box. I remember home box office or the time people first went on. It was like. Incredible relief to be able to have it go everywhere by satellite rather than bicycle movies to head ends. I mean, right. that's a real. But uh, I mean, if you could go on, and I appreciate it. What if you go on, besides the music and that, you mentioned a couple of the Business Week. We do a show called Business Week's Guide to Careers that yeah. um, we produce in association with our sister company, Black Tie Network Productions, and Business Week. And it's every week, Business Week's editors interview people from the business community as well as from the. Um, people who are experts in the job and careers market in terms of things like writing resumes, dressing for success, um, how to do it, how to uh, go to your first interview, the type of questions to ask, as well as bringing people in who are experts in a particular field, whether it's a president of a company or somebody who's in public relations or advertising or the financial market mm -hmm. or journalism. We had Ernie and Nastis on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and they talked about what kind of career opportunities are available in their field, as well as how to best approach the job search in that in their particular field. Yeah, it's interesting. People on campuses are interested in what they're going to go after the campus. So what? It's probably the thing that they're most interested in. Who, who, who's involved in that from business? Is Mr. Wolman? I mean, the editors, you say? Or who's the editors, they, they produce a magazine. Does it, or they, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They mm -hmm. produce a magazine um, called Business Week's Guide to Careers. Uh -huh. um, and it is comes out six times a year. And both the executive editor and the managing editor um, conduct the interviews. They alternate every week. In fact, when Mr. Woolman? No. Oh, oh. Um, well, it, I guess it doesn't matter. But yeah. Business week. What you'll see, you'll see yeah. the editor. Yeah, in right. A, we're going we'll to show a video tape in a minute. Yeah, right. Uh huh. And uh, you'll get an idea of you know what. In fact, you'll get an idea of what we look like on the air and what. Uh, uh, what that show looks like. Yeah. Okay. And then there's other. There's other. Uh, Program as well. You brought it up, so you've set it up in a certain sense. Maybe it might be a good time for us to show that tape. I agree. Now, it you, have, you have a maybe we could set it up for us. You have an eight-minute demo tape. Yeah. We'll come back and talk some more after. It's eight minutes, and really, this is the tape that we use to introduce the service to the colleges. This mm -hmm. is what the our affiliate salespeople take out to the universities to demonstrate and explain what the service is, as well as give them a good idea of what we look like on the air, mm -hmm. what our visuals and graphics look like, as well as the, a feel for all of the programming. Uh -huh. um, and it's, uh, So it runs, what, about six, six, seven minutes, eight minutes? It runs about minute? eight minutes, and it's, um, you know, it, it'll be updated next year when we change some of our programming. It has we'll to be, be updated added. to keep up with that ever-breaking programming. Exactly. Season. Right, exactly. you got to be right at the edge of things. Okay, well, that's coming up, demonstration tape of the, of the system, and we'll come back and talk a little bit more with this really interesting... Uh, 
uh, Development Campus Network. We're speaking again with uh, Bradley Siegel, Vice Executive Vice President and General Manager. So we'll give you that tape and we'll be coming right back. Campus Network, the eyes of a new age. Our basic service is the only television programming designed exclusively for the college community. Imaginative, innovative, provocative, timely, intelligent, comic, informative, inquisitive, sensitive, energetic, hot. Campus Network fills a void by giving students what they really want to see for a change. Each week, Campus Network delivers via satellite a programming package which affiliates tape and rebroadcast five times per week, at times compatible with students' erratic schedules. And because it's advertiser-supported, the service is delivered to colleges free. This basic service is designed for viewing on a closed circuit system, a dedicated cable or local access cable channel. Programming can be seen in student unions, pubs and cafeterias, dorm rooms and lounges, off-campus housing, and homes in the community. Campus Network programming entertains and informs. Now college students have an intelligent alternative. Television that speaks their language. Here's a look at our lineup. The best in documentaries. Subjects are illuminated with accuracy, insight, and uncompromising truth. Real to real. You get your hands on the boat. You try to get in. You can't quite get in. The wave knocks you down off the boat. And you accelerate 100 miles an hour in less than a second. You're screaming down a blind alley going the wrong way. A minute and a half of comic relief. Rai animations and other assorted nonsense. Comic quickie. Produced films and tapes are finally getting the exposure they deserve. Award-winning works in comedy, romance, adventure, science fiction, and animation. Student Showcase. Adult Cartoon Show. Adult-oriented selections from the archives of the Museum of Cartoon Art. <laughs> Our Music in Concert series spotlights such luminaries as Eurythmics, Herbie Hancock, and Lou Reed, Audiophilia. National On Campus Report. 30 second updates on the latest news, events, and trends of vital interest to campuses across America. This is the Campus Network National On Campus Report. Writer James Michener has given $2 million to Swarthmore College, his alma mater. The Pulitzer Prize winning author says that he's repaying Swarthmore for a $2,000 scholarship he received in 1925. That's $1,998,000 interest, about 1,000 to 1. Swarthmore, just outside of Philadelphia, has long enjoyed a reputation as one of the nation's outstanding liberal arts colleges. I'm Earl Bailey for the National On Campus Report. The Progressive Music Video Show. 
Not just today's hits, but a knowing glimpse of tomorrow's trend. New Grooves. We're back to normal with new music on New Grooves this week, and I'm Meg Griffin. First up, the Go-Go's. Now, 1983, I'm um, taking a breather. The band played a few clubs and didn't release any records. Now, 84 brings the release they've been waiting to make and hear from their latest LP talk show, Is the Go-Go's, with Yes or No. Yeah, Survival tips for finding a career in the highly competitive 80s. From writing resumes to convincing corporate recruiters. Business Week's Guide to Careers. Can your college placement office really help you land the kind of job you're looking for? Today, what a placement office can and cannot do for you. The Sensational 70s, a year-by-year -year retrospective of one of the most momentous decades ever. These are the people, places, and events that have shaped all our lives. 1970. Oh, what a year. Bombs are dropped in Cambodia. Four students are killed at Kent State. But we had fun crises, too. The miniskirt versus the midi. How much leg is too much, or too little? I have a dress shop. I hate it. Through constant research and analysis, Campus Network keeps in touch with the pulse of today's students. Ongoing focus groups dictate the style and content of our programming. Programming that gets watched. Outstanding programming is just the beginning. Campus Network provides schools with a complete package including a freestanding display that serves as an information center for other college activities, as well as Campus Networks, bold newspaper tuning ads, special events and giveaways, a new source of revenue by selling local advertising, an internship program which gives students the opportunity for valuable work experience by planning Campus Network promotions. Our basic service is intelligent television. And our premium service offers even more great programming. Box office biggies, plus state-of-the-art hardware. And there's more on the horizon. It's all part of the excitement of the space and communications age. Satellites make the network possible. But it's campuses such as yours that make the network real. Campus Network. The eyes of a new age share our vision. That's beautiful. That's beautiful done. The eyes of a new age. That's a nice. Uh, that's a nice uh, work. Do you have a hand helping put that tape together? It seems to me like a well done, professionally put together tape. I had a little bit of a yeah, hand. It's, right, uh, actually, right. program services did it, uh, uh -huh. and affiliate sales put it together. So. Uh, Chip Nowitzki, who uh -huh. was our program mm -hmm. services director, right. actually orchestrated the whole thing. Yeah. And um, Marilyn Friedman and Margaret LaCicero, our advertising and promotion manager mm -hmm. and uh, affiliate sales director, yeah. um, were really the ones who got put in the creative input and arranged for all the graphics to be created and really gave it its look and its flavor. Yeah, well, you like to keep the whole programming look up to professional snuff and so forth because uh, uh, sure. you're building in that direction. Yeah, yeah we look yeah. at it as a yeah. television network. Sure, right? absolutely, and truly it is. It's a television yeah. network aimed at uh, some of our leading edge people in the country. And I, I wonder, I mean, in terms of the future as it's unfolding and so forth, uh, you, you, you know, I wonder if you could develop a little bit more about the programming as it were, like some of the lectures and things. I mean, there are things that are I don't want to, you know, like something that's not, you know, that's, uh, you, you present some uh, lectures of some of our leading intellectuals. I mean, int universities are places of higher learning. Sure. You understand what I'm saying? The yeah. intellectual, intelli uh, uh, educational implications of this. Well, and is there any connection or do you see any connection between what you're doing and, let's say, the kind of things the British have tried to do with the British Open University or the things that Mr. Annenberg was interested in in terms of trying to interconnect our college or educational systems yeah. uh, using telecommunication? Okay. Let me just say two things. One is, as far as National College Television Network is concerned right now, um, it's mainly entertainment and informational programming. Uh, we do a show called Real to Real, which is a different documentary every week, mainly dealing with social and political and moral type issues, issues that are at the forefront of college students' minds on campuses these days. That we look at as educational. Mm -hmm. um, 
even the adult cartoon show is educational in the sense that every week it deals with a different theme, whether it's racism in cartoons or stereotypes in cartoons, women in cartoons. Um, so there's a lot of information that can be gleaned out of that, and mm -hmm. it's a much more intellectual approach to television, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and that's the feedback that we get from the market. Um, as far as your other question is concerned, uh, how, what direction are we going as far as real educational programming, coursework, traditional college type of information? Well, or even presenting, you know, lecture series with leading intellectual lights, sure. but something that's got something other than image and, you know, sense, sen yeah. sensory uh, excitement like music and so forth, but, you know, just intellectual lectures with leading people. Sure. That our, what we're, our plan on National College Television Network is to expand to a real-time feed and go into anywhere from four to six to eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. But there's just so much programming that you can do that's going to appeal to the entire campus community or even wide segments of the campus community. And mm -hmm. you sort of get to the uh, peak of this um, this pyramid of programming segments. And, and the, the peak or the, the, the smallest area, we begin to really narrow, narrow cast the college market, and we begin to do programs that appeal to political science majors, economics majors, engineers, and those programs will begin will, will begin to be used to augment existing coursework. Oh, you can uh, see yourself going that. We do see way. ourselves see going, going that, way. that way. But uh -huh. that programming is not programming that your average advertiser is going to support. It's mm -hmm. going to have to be programming that's either underwritten through grants, mm -hmm. produced on campuses, and we are, we distribute it, or underwritten by um, national sponsors, mm -hmm. whether, you know, the AT and T, mm -hmm. mobile mm -hmm. engineering company type of underwriting. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we see for National College Television Network. We could also, eventually, as we expand, distribute the type of telecourses that Annenberg yeah. creates, and mm -hmm. that's really what Annenberg, um, their mission was, and their mission continues to be to finance programs that are, you know, 16 or 29 week, half hour or hour programs that's coupled with a, um, a textbook and a workbook and uh, affiliation with a university can be used to gain course credit. Course mm -hmm. credit, uh, core introductory courses that would be available to the masses. Anybody who is tied into a cable system or can receive it through the learning channel and PBS, mm -hmm. etc., yeah. can actually get college courses by doing these television programs um, these telecourses yeah. at home. Yeah, it's um, good to mention there is the Learning Channel that's been established for quite the old Appalachian sure. group and so forth. And you work in sort of it's a sister institution in a sense? Not really. Missions, no, but, we uh, have a different mission yeah. at this mm -hmm. point. But mm -hmm. I think as we expand the amount of hours we're on the air and our satellite capacity, we will have the capacity to distribute those type of um, telecourses as well. But at this point, it's not something that we're venturing into at all. Yeah, the telecourse is a really wide uh, thing because it involves a great deal of time and so forth. It takes a great deal of time. But I was thinking in terms of having the perceptions of some particular person in a field that might be a, an intellectual leading well, light, uh, B.F. Skinner or somebody that everybody would know and have an intellectual content. That's the whole concept you know behind saying, you know? yeah. That's the whole concept behind the Video Center yeah. events uh -huh. where we will be offering programs, lectures, debates by leading intellectuals, All right, yeah, uh, right. leaders in fields, whether it's a leader in the business field or the field of science mm -hmm. or economics, um, journalism, in either a single speaker format um, or a debate type of format or a round table dialogue type of format where you mm -hmm. have a subject, whether it be science fiction or economics or you, p you pick a, a, t a particular um, topic and you get a unique group of people mm -hmm. to focus on that. And that could have actually a wide appeal. That would yes, have a wide appeal. It could have a wide appeal. It could have a wide or narrow appeal. Initially, yeah. as we start doing those programs, we'll look to, to feature people and subjects that would have a wide appeal, that yeah. would appeal to the largest uh, common denominator of the college community. Um, and those would be live via satellite mm. and they'd be a two way audio loop so mm -hmm. that. Students watching the programming around the camp on the on our affiliate campuses in these video center theaters. Yeah. We look at these as as programs that large numbers of students or members of the campus community would come out to see. Uh -huh. Will have the opportunity to ask questions at the end. Of. Yeah, right. So they can have a feedback. It's almost like a video conference exhibit, but it allows some of the leading edge intellectual perception to be shared with a wide audience, exactly. and that would be the promise of the technology 
that could mesh with the educational potential of it. Right. Again, we're not looking to replace what's on campus. We're looking to augment what already exists on campus, and there are certainly fine academic standards that exist on campus, and we don't feel we can pre reproduce that, replicate that, um, or even do away with any of that. All we feel that we can do is supply information and people and ideas that from the real world, from, from outside yeah. of the college yeah. campus. Yeah, so most most college students do uh, read the newspaper and are concerned with what's going on and keep track of things, events that are going on, and have an interest in that, as do the general citizenry. And it would be uh, an extension of uh, that function because an intellect. I mean, a university is a place of higher learning. Right. Presumably, there's interest with questions of the human condition and uh, these kind of things. Absolutely. To the degree that there is that kind of interest in the general society, and it's there. This theater aspect that you have is the beginnings of a video theater venue. It's a new venue for programming in a certain sense. We're, we're used to thinking of our, our, our movie theaters where we go and be entertained so with movie theaters. The video theater concept is a new venue, let's say, just in terms of the society in general. I mean, do, do, do you see a, a great future for video theaters or theaters that people would go and have be entertained as they go to a movie theater, except it's a video-based process? and. I suppose you do because, in a sense, you're yeah, involved well right at the leading edge of it, right? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. one major segment that's a major of our development. business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a major segment of our business is installing these video centers, um, again, that have these large screen video projection systems, state-of-the-art video, um, Dolby surround sound systems, the KU Band Earth stations, um, uh, just the finest video audio experience you will experience in a theater. Mm -hmm. In the on college campuses across the country, so yeah. in essence, it is a chain of video theaters, satellite yeah. video theaters That's right. that have the capability of receiving more than just movies, but concerts, lectures, debates, cultural events, and we see we don't see it really stopping at college campuses. We right. do not uh, campus network will only focus on the college market. We, however, have an investor in our company, um, in, in our parent company. Sad Corp, mm -hmm. um, which is the SNS theater chain out of the Midwest, primarily Chicago, Wisconsin area, and they are beginning to look at the possibility and the probability of converting their theaters to video theaters, to yeah. video centers, That's just like on the college campuses. Uh -huh. And they've be begun experimenting with that. I think you mm -hmm. mentioned that you read about it in the New York Times, yeah, Wall Street Journal, back, right? Hollywood sure. Reporter. Yeah, right. Um, where they deliver the programs, not via satellite, but off of very high quality uh, videotape machines through GE projectors, mm -hmm. um, and experimented with a few different types of programs. They did Sophisticated Ladies, which is a Broadway show. They did um, one or two concerts, a jazz concert, and the audience received the programs extremely well, and they mm -hmm. came out in, in, in fairly large numbers. The programs were free. But they did well, and uh, I think that's what we were looking for there, is what is the audience response walking into what is traditionally a movie theater to see a program that's not a movie. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Can, those, can those theaters be utilized for other things other than movies, especially when you've got a, you know, a sixplex or a fourplex or a threeplex, whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, again, yeah. Well, again, that's a, that's a function, isn't it, of the of the sophistication of the technology of uh, projection, which is becoming amazing. The quality of that, and then when that begins to be tied into high definition television, you have on the screen in this theater venue a, a product that they say is as clear and as interesting and as a, a quality of a 35 millimeter. Uh, Eventually, that's what 35 millimeter uh, people who are tied to 35 millimeter will scoff at that, but the, the, the te television technology itself is moving along so well yeah. and speeding the whole pace up. I think, we'll it's be, I think we'll be close to that very soon. Uh -huh. well, our plan is to be um, uh, to approach 35 millimeter quality by September 1986, which mm -hmm. is just a you know, slightly over a year from now. Yeah, that's going to be a that, that will be a function of the quality of the cameras and the production. No, it won't no? be. No, it, it oh. will. The quality is there. Mm -hmm. Thirty-five millimeter quality exists, and the amount of information that is contained on a thirty-five millimeter print mm -hmm. exists. N the problem if you have a is thirty-five millimeter print, for instance. It will. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. The problem is, you can't transmit a thirty-five millimeter print via satellite and then project it through a video projector. Oh, I see. The standards and quality have been limited by 
the NTSC format, which is only 525 lines of information. Oh, I see. And yeah. once you blow that up on a giant screen, yeah. you lose more and more of that information. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Because the lines become more right, and more yeah. expanded. So yeah. what you've got to do is put more lines of information in there. Right, right. So I you can't mean. allow the image to only be a 525 line image. You, uh, image. you uh -huh. have to get up there around 1300 or 1125. There's all different numbers that are being talked about. Uh -huh. um, so it's not a matter of necessarily shooting the high definition image with high definition cameras and high definition video, but it's how do you take the information contained on a 35 millimeter uh, negative or in a positive and transmit that via satellite and project it through a video projector. And that's where our system is developing. Uh, our developing system is to take the components of that. Mm -hmm. um, and make that and aspect. Just, and transmit those component elements, red, green, and blue, uh -huh. and then project them on a screen. Oh, I see. That's a part of it I hadn't thought of, but of course it would be necessary to have that kind of a quality go through the technological system of distribution of that. If you get to production, at the production end, we're going to need high definition That's capability. That's true. And yeah, as you go into more, doing more a live production, feed. you'll have to have high definition production sure. standards, right? The yeah. problem, again, is if you go to a live, if you're doing a live rock concert, let's say, mm -hmm. and you were to shoot it hypothetically with high definition cameras. And have bad technology, it still wouldn't work. You couldn't then show, you couldn't then distribute it on a home video or through traditional cable because then the, the traditional television wouldn't sets handle it. Uh, wouldn't handle yeah, it. I understand. I understand. Right. You so have to have a system. It's only for overview. our system. Right. It's right. only for the, the getting through our projection system that it's going to work. I see. Yeah. That's right. why. Uh, we'll, well, you had to approach this in a systems way. Then exactly. it had all of these technologies and base. And what you've done also, what it seems to me, is really important in terms of telecommunications. Is this is a leading example of a of a ongoing venue for a pay per view system of television distribution. And a lot of people are saying that's the direction in the near term, that the pay-per-view aspect where people pay a certain set fee for a particular programming pattern <laughs> is, is the future over the next few years, and you're right on the leading edge of that in a sense, That's right? exactly right. In fact, you've got all these campuses set up as a venue. It's well, we're, we've taken one, one side of that. Mm -hmm. we've, uh, the, the video center theaters are public pay-per-view venues. I mean, mm -hmm. pay-per-view is a misleading word because it really means paying for a particular program in your home on your television set. Or in a theater. Well, mm -hmm. but that's not pay-per-view. Oh, okay. That's theater. It's box office. Yeah, right. um, mm -hmm. What oh, we're doing, though, is in, in our distribution cycle, in the, in the world of television and distribution of television programs, mm -hmm. we are looking for a pay-per-view window, mm -hmm. whether it's mm -hmm. for a movie or a concert or a boxing event. We're looking for that live window. Or a lecture by an intellectual. Or a lecture. Maybe. Yeah, or a or debate. Right. But that probably wouldn't mm -hmm. be a pay-per-view event for the home. No. That's why right. I, I refer to oh, that. Oh, I see. Right. And okay. the students probably wouldn't pay for that either. either. That's something the school would pay. Not even our bright students at our brightest schools wouldn't pay for that. No. The maybe. school traditionally mm -hmm. pays for that. Oh, I see. Okay. That's okay. the difference. Uh -huh. And they don't uh -huh. charge an admission mm -hmm. for it. Uh -huh. But what we're doing in conjunction with a, our sister company, Black Tie Network, mm -hmm. Black Tie Network is developing a, and launching a pay-per-view distribution system to the home. Mm -hmm. And there, we will be a component. Um, we will be one, one more uh, window, one more um, arena that they can distribute their programming to, the programming that they produce. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So Campus Network and its video center theaters will be, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of seats that people potentially are paying a ticket to as mm -hmm. the cable universe, which may have million, three or eight million homes that are addressable, which could also be paying a ticket price. How much, how much use do you see being used for those theaters? I mean, how, how many hours a day do you see those theaters being used, or how often, or how many times a week, or what is the pattern you see for that? I Our mean, plan is, uh, in the first year, next year, to do at least one program a month. One program a month. And then mm -hmm. go the, in the following year, academic year, 1986, 87, to go to two programs a month and three programs and four <coughs> programs. That's what our projection. The limitation on the use of that would be the market? or it would Programming, be just the programming. amount of programming that's available. Now, that could increase, but uh -huh. we very conservatively have looked at um, how much programming we can put through those systems, how much programming we can develop, how much the market will bear. It's a new technology. Yeah, I understand, yeah. Um, it's going to be getting people to go into a new place to see programming, a new way to see programming. So we've taken all those factors into account, 
and very conservatively projected how much programming we'll be doing. Mm -hmm. If the market demand is there, we'll be able to supply it. If the market demand is there, and then some, it would be uh, a cost factor would be what? All the market will bear, or you keep the cost as low as you can to meet it, or what will be the marketing the strategy for the use of this system of? Well, I don't want to say pay-per-view, but people could pay a certain thing to have something on a television screen and quality like that. What would be the uh, marketing, marketing strategy? I mean, would you keep as the price the ticket, to keep the ticket price, yeah, as low as you possibly could, or would you try and get all the market would bear, or what is the market strategy on that, do you know? The, the ticket price would be, um, the ticket price would be a function of what that market can bear. Mm -hmm. um, if, if con the whole ob object is to keep the ticket price low, to try and get as many students in to see the program as possible. Right. Remember, mm -hmm. we, we're in business, so okay. we want to keep the ticket price low and not mm -hmm. cut ourselves out of the market. But right. at, the same po at the same point, get the ticket price to a point that to its maximum level in that market for yeah. what that market will bear, what those students will bear. And that way, we'll make money and the, and the schools will make their money back. A lot of exciting challenges confronting you as general manager. you got to figure out the cost and return on all of these things. It's an exciting place to be. You must be having a good time these days. And growing old quickly. <laughs> yeah, growing old quickly. But wise. You get wiser <laughs> with the ages, right? Well, I'll tell you, it's an exciting development. I could go on talking to you for hours. We'll have to come back and see you again and check up with you on down the line and everything like, you know, down the line. But I congratulate you on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on the campus network and the whole development. It's a really exciting uh, adventure. I mean, and I, I, I can only say I wish you all the very best as you move on into this communications future, having such a hand in helping to build out there in campuses of America. And they'll be seeing them more and more to become institutionally part of the American scene. Hopefully so. I could go on talking to you for six hours easy about all the implications of this. And uh, we maybe we'll be checking back with it from time to time. But I would remind you again in the cable television audience here in New York City that it's been your pleasure to have the perceptions of Bradley Jay Siegel. Again, he's Executive Vice President and General Manager with this exciting development campus network and uh, happy to have been able to bring you those perceptions. We here on Conversations would invite you to tune in again uh, next week. We'll be coming back next week, but I'm afraid we've run out of time for this particular segment. It's been an important and uh, interesting, exciting program. So we're coming back next week, and Brad, once again, thank you very much indeed thank you. Uh, for everything and particularly for participating in the series. Sure. We'll see you next week. Good night.